everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I haven't made a video for a while because I've been working on this study and it's been very complicated. Today we're going to learn what people group the 153 fish are. Now, I realize that numerous people in the prophetic community have taught that the 153 fish are the pre-trib rapture. And when we do a careful study, and take the time to really dig in, we will come to realize that those 153 fish are not the raptured saints. They are a people group that you don't want to be in. And it's so important that we interpret Bible prophecy correctly. Otherwise, we just might end up with the interpretations that we believe. And I want to tell you why that could be a problem and a person may not have the most optimum outcome or the outcome they desire. For 2,000 years, Israel, although they believe in the prophecies, they know there's prophecies, they know there's things going to be happening in the future, they understand a lot about their Messiah, but they have misinterpreted many of the prophecies, and they have paid a very heavy price for that. Well, the Father is very just, and he is going to judge the church with the same criteria as he judges Israel. He has to, otherwise he's not a, a righteous father, otherwise he's not fair. So he is expecting the church to study Bible prophecy and really seek to understand the correct interpretation of Bible prophecies. He is expecting us to let go of any traditions we've picked up from our Christian leaders. And if they are traditions that are not substantiated by the word, then we need to let go of that. That is what he was expecting his nation to do 2,000 years ago. They were taught Bible prophecy interpretations that were just, was tradition. And so many could not let go of that. And they paid a heavy price for that. So this is why I really want us to consider why we need to be diligently seeking the scriptures, and especially at this hour in the church age, to be understanding Bible prophecy. God has given us helps. He's given us a way to double check our Bible prophecy interpretations, and those helps, and that way of double checking is in the scriptures. So with that said, we have taken a lot of time to prayerfully study this passage in John chapter 21 about who the people group are that are the 153 fish. And in order to come to correct prophetic interpretations, we need to compare all four gospels that have a fishing scene with the disciples. Another thing we need to do is read the New Testament as if the bride is gone. So we need to even read the scriptures in a different way that we have previously. And once you read the New Testament as if the bride is gone, you're going to pick up a lot of clues and a lot of our traditions are going to be thrown out the window and we're going to get some accurate interpretations as we do that. Then what we want to do is reread the New Testament again as if the church is gone and that only the remnant is remaining. And then once again, layers of prophecy interpretations will emerge and you'll be able to compare that. And so this is just a Bible study tip for those who are interested in learning Bible prophecy on their own. In order to know who the 153 fish represent, we need to keep in mind that Matthew is written to Israel. Now there will always be people in Israel believing in Messiah and some who are not believing in Messiah. That will not change until the remnant. And that is when all Israel will be saved. So by the time God's timeline gets to the end of Daniel's 70th week, that remnant, they will come to believe in Yeshua as their Messiah. Then we need to keep in mind that Mark is written to the left behind church because salvation is the free gift of God. There's nothing you can do to earn it or buy it. You can't do enough good works. You cannot serve enough in the church. Uh, you cannot pay enough church tithes. It's a free gift, but rewards are earned. And the rapture is a reward for those who are alive when the bride will be 
raptured. And Mark is written to those who miss the pre-trib rapture of the bride, but they are still the church. The church has a huge responsibility in that first half of Daniel's 70th week. Because after the bride leaves, then believing Israel is going to be grafted in via the 144,000 Jews from the 12 tribes. They are going to wake up the sleepy church and together they are going to fulfill the great commission. Luke is written to the pre-trib raptured bride. John is written to the remnant. So you can see that Matthew and John are kind of the bookends of the church. The Jews kicked off the church age and they are going to close out the church age at that mid-trib rapture. Let me give you an example. It will help our study that we're doing today. Matthew 4.19, in that fishing scene, Jesus says, and he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In Mark, the record is, and Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. So when we realize that Mark is mainly directed to the left behind church, we're seeing here that they were not being fishers of men. They were not involved in sharing the gospel giving their testimony. So God is going to make them become fishers of men. So God in the book of Mark is giving hints throughout that book of why they are left behind. Now, this is where I want to point out that in all four gospels, there are important instructions for all three groups, the bride, the church, and the remnant. So this is why you don't want to throw out the other three Gospels because there are crucial clues that are recorded in all four Gospels that are for the bride. Also, in order to know what people group the 153 fish represent, we need to pick up clues from the parable of the dragnet that Jesus spoke of. Look at Matthew 13, 47. He said, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. And there are all kinds of fish in the sea. Okay, in order to know who the people group is of the 153 fish, we also need to keep in mind Jesus's instructions about having faith to cast a mountain into the sea. Matthew 21, 21, and Jesus answered and said to them, truly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. Let's consider this verse for just a moment. What did he do to the fig tree? He cursed it, didn't he? What have we taught you here that mountains are symbolic of? Government. So there's going to come a time during Daniel's 70th week where saints will have to say to the mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea. And they'll have to have faith knowing it will happen. It may not happen that very instant, but that is the thing about faith. Even though things don't happen instantly, it's important to understand that it will happen at some point in time. So that mountain, that government that is going to be in operation during Daniel's 70th week, it's going to be the beast government. And I imagine when Jesus said this to the disciples, it's very likely that he was pointing to a group of Sanhedrin or Pharisees, lawmakers. Okay, so we're going to start with John 21, 1, and I'm going to do an expository teaching through 14. And that's why I'm using this format today, because I want you to see my screen and have these scriptures and some of these high points I want to pick out so that you can go back later and you can do an, your own in-depth study and take a couple hours to prayerfully study so that you can double check our work and that you can be certain of 
who that 153 fish are because you have a responsibility to teach your loved ones. And so I want you to have all the helps at your fingertips to do this. So John 21, 1, New American Standard. After these things, Jesus manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And he manifested himself in this way. Okay, we want to stop here and notice in the book of John, it's the only gospel where the Sea of Tiberias is used as another name for the Sea of Galilee and the Lake of Gennesaret. In Matthew and Mark, at the beginning of Christ's ministry, in this fishing scene with the disciples, the location was referred to as the Sea of Galilee. In Luke, that fishing scene was referred to as the Lake of Gennesaret. And there's a reason why. And I want you to do your own word studies, and I want you to prayerfully seek the Lord to find out why. But I'm going to share with you why in John 21, 1, the Holy Spirit refers to the Sea of Galilee as the Sea of Tiberias, because only in the book of John is it referred to as the Sea of Tiberias. So we need to ask, what does Tiberias mean? Well, Tiberius is the name of a Roman emperor. Tiberius Julius Caesar Augustus was the emperor who reigned from A.D. 14 to 37. He was the emperor of Rome during Christ's ministry and the time of he was crucified. So that is an important detail because it means John being the remnant, this is more validation. It is significant because this scene, specifically, the Holy Spirit is giving us a clue. This is during the beast system. And Jesus is manifesting himself to the remnant when they are having to endure the beast system. John 21, 2. Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. Okay, so first thing we want to notice, there's seven disciples total. So when you count those on your finger, you've got Simon Peter, which means hearing Peter. You've got Thomas. You've got Nathanael. You've got the sons of Zebedee. So now lift two more fingers and two others of his disciples were together. You should have seven fingers up. We know what seven means. It's completion. Interestingly, it's minus four of the disciples because at this point there's 11 disciples. Judas Iscariot, he's out of the picture. So four. Now kind of think of this. That's two sets of witnesses because witnesses go in pairs. So the bride is not on the scene and the church is not on the scene. Verse three. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will also come with you. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Okay, everything in the scriptures is very important. The Holy Spirit is communicating things by telling it's night, and that they caught nothing. Also, notice here that it's night. This is a dark time for the saints on earth, for the remnant. They caught nothing. Well, God wants to make us fishers of men. Jesus came saying he would make them fishers of men. Well, they caught nothing. They weren't catching men to bring them out of the beast system at this point in history. Okay, we want to notice, why did they go fishing? Well, because they're hungry. Uh, the word is gone. Jesus is gone. The church is gone. They're not going to the government for free food because that is what is going to be offered. You're going to have to sell yourself. You're going to have to sell your soul to fit in with the government at that second half of the beast system. So they are hungry. Good news for them. They have fishing skills and they are resourceful. So they are using what is at hand. What is the alternative? To go and beg? Well, that's not what God wants his people to do, is to go and beg. So they are using what they have. They're hungry. The word Jesus Christ, the church is gone. 
There's no fish, there's no people to catch and to evangelize. So that's just another layer of its meaning. So a lot of people criticize the disciples for going fishing, and I see it as being very prudent. Okay, look at verse 4. So John chapter 21, verse 4. But when the day was now breaking, okay, they're getting close to the end. Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Verse 5. So Jesus said to them, children, you do not have any fish, do you? They answered him, no. What you're going to notice when you reread the Gospels as if the bride is gone, from then on out, the saints are called children. This is why you'll want to look up our video, which the description is, and there's a link below. Who are the children of the bride chamber? That's a very important people group. And that's a very important phrase that you're going to want to understand. So we learn that those who miss the pre-trib rapture are called children. Once the church is resurrected and raptured at mid-trib, that is their adoption as sons. And they're called sons. Verse 6, And he said to them, Cast the net on the right hand side of the boat, and you will find a catch. So they cast, and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. What is remarkable here is we notice only in the fishing scenes of Luke and John does Jesus give fishing instructions on how to catch fish. But of course, the instructions are different because it's a different season. The beast system is full on complete control. The whole world is under the power of the beast system. And the instructions here to the remnant, Jesus said, cast the net on the right hand side of the boat. Whereas in Luke, he said, go deeper. Instructions are different depending on which people group Jesus is referring to and the season that they are in. So if you get out your concordance and you do a study of right hand, you're going to understand the significance of this. It is the right hand of power. When you start collecting all those verses that have the phrase right hand, you're going to see it means power. And we also connect that with Jesus is standing at the right hand of power. He, the right hand of the Father. What's remarkable here is they cast it out, no argument this time. If you will remember, in Luke, there was a little bit of conversation before Peter agreed to follow the instructions. But here in this situation, they just do it. And they were not able to haul it into the boat because of the great number of fish. Verse 7, Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. So when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put his outer garment on, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. When you hear the phrase something like, that disciple whom Jesus loved, you know, it was a courtesy back in their culture. They did not say, I they would not draw attention to themselves, the me or I or I was going. They would put themselves more in the background by saying that disciple whom Jesus loved. And you'll see this in the Gospels. So that's just a little side note. So Simon did not recognize him initially. It was John. Peter put on his outer garment. He was stripped for work. Peter has thrown himself into the beast system because that's what the Sea of Tiberias is signifying. So he's so anxious to get to Jesus, he just throws himself in. Verse 8, the other disciples came in the little boat. So now we're getting a little detail. It's a little boat. For they were not far from the land, but about 100 yards away, dragging the net full of fish. A detail I notice is that the scriptures 
tell us how many yards away the boat is. The King James calls it a little ship. Why do we always focus on the number of fish, 153, but we don't notice the other number that is mentioned in this passage? In the King James, if I remember right, it says 200 cubits. But in the NASB, it's 100 yards away. So now we kind of get a picture of how far Peter is swimming in the beast system <laughs> to get to the shore. I don't know if many of you are swimmers. I don't know if you've ever swam without stopping 100 yards. You are really pooped by the time you are done swimming 100 yards. And imagine now being in the sea where you've got a tide and you've got some waves, so, you know, there's some currents. It is not easy to swim in the sea. You've got salt water going, so your eyes get irritated. But this is what Peter does. And this might be an important detail. So look at verse 9 at the bottom of the screen here. And so when they got upon the land, they saw a charcoal fire already laid and fish placed on it and bread. Verse 10, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have caught. Okay, this is where we get a glaring clue that these 153 fish that we're going to read about in a moment, they are not the pre-trib raptured saints. These fish are scheduled for the charcoal fire. What did Jesus say in Luke 12, 49? I have come to cast fire upon the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. So when Jesus began his ministry, early in his ministry, he was already looking forward, peering through the end of Daniel's 70th week. That's what he was wishing were all, was already kindled. We want to make it all about the bride, thinking, oh, he just, everything he's doing is get the bride. And we got to stop being bridezilla and start cluing into the things that are on the heart of Jesus. Because then we're going to understand more of the prophetic word. But these 153 fish, they are scheduled for that fire that Jesus is going to kindle towards the end of Daniel's 70th week. Verse 11, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land. Okay, remember now, he's just swam about 100 yards in the sea. We know he's hungry. That's why they went fishing in the first place. So he worked all night, and now he still has nothing. He hasn't had anything to eat. He does that long swim, and now he has the strength to draw the net single-handedly as the, imagine the current might be trying to take it back out to see he's drawing it up onto the land and it's full of large fish 153 and although there were so many the net was not torn okay we need to look at w the net why did the holy spirit tell us the net was not torn well, we need to compare it with the other scenes where the disciples were fishing. In Gospel of Mark, in that fishing scene, when Jesus called them, they were mending the net. Oh, that gives you a clue of why the church is going to be left behind. There's holes in their net. The net is a symbol of your body, the tool you use to evangelize with, to catch fish, to catch men, to bring them out of the beast system. Well, the left behind church, they've got some holes in their nets, but after the pre-trib rapture of the bride, the church is going to wake up and they're going to start mending their nets and they're going to become fishers of men. If you'll remember, what Jesus said to them in that fishing scene in the Gospel of Mark. Okay, in Luke, during that fishing scene with the disciples, it says they were washing their nets. All right, this is giving us a clue why it's the bride that goes pre-trib. How does the father pick the bride for his son? 
See, the father picks the bride. The son does not pick his bride. The bride is washing her nets. She wants to make sure there's no holes in her skills, her evangelizing skills. She wants to make sure there's no holes in whatever resources she has to help bring people out of the beast system and into the kingdom of God, the family of God. She's washing her nets even now, using all of her resources to do that. Practically speaking, this is a good time for me to say, please, if you are enjoying this lesson in any way, if you have learned even one new thing, please click like, please subscribe, please share, but do something with the resources you have to get the YouTube analytics working for this little small channel here because it very well could be that this video someday reaches your loved ones that are asleep. And although they caught so many fish, the net was not torn. Peter's body was still strong. There's something, a divine recovery occurred when Jesus manifested himself on the shore. So you see the remnant, as we learned in the last video, that the remnant will be let out of the stalls and their youth restored. All right, so this, we see this in action. In John, the net was not torn, implying that normally it would have been torn with that amount of fish in it. Okay, now we're gonna study the word large, as in the phrase large fish. That word large is Strong's number G, 3173. That word comes from G3176 and G3187. And that means megas and magistos, greatest, exceedingly great, large, loud, mighty, be sore afraid, strong, rank, so of high rank, highly esteemed, and elder. So I've given you clips from Strong's eSword, so you can study that out yourself and see that. So this is cluing us in that, huh, these 153 fish that are going to be put onto the charcoal fire that Jesus kindles, these are not saints. These are not believers in Jesus. These are not Christians. These are not Messianic Jews. These are high-ranking officials, magistos, in the beast system, the Tiberius system. You don't want to be those fish. You don't want to believe that you are part of that group. Because like I started out this video, if you believe you are that 153 fish, you just might get what you believe. This is why I want to really press home to you continue to verify from all these Bible prophecy teachers what they are teaching before you agree to it or say amen to it. Because amen, that phrase means so be it. So when you hear someone say that 153 fish is the rapture and you say amen, you come into agreement, that means so be it. Again, this might not work out optimally for you. Verse 12, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples ventured to question him. Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. All right, we learn here, Jesus veiled his appearance from this group of remnant. Yet, because of his familiar instructions, they knew it was him. He will still require faith in his word over natural sight with the remnant. Same with us, the bride. We're hoping to be the bride. That's our blessed hope. Same with the church. Same with the sleepy church. Right now they have wishful thinking that they are going to be raptured pre-trib. Many think just because they're a Christian, they are a shoe in for that pre-trib rapture. 
They don't recognize it's a reward for faithfulness, for prayerfully studying the Holy Word of God from Genesis to Revelation to get to know the heart of the Father and what He has scheduled during Daniel's 70th week. And we learned from our videos, number 160 and 161, Jesus was walking out Daniel's 70th week. So this is why the bride, those of us hoping to be the bride, we are studying, we are keeping our eyes on Jesus. We're not looking at outward signs. Verse 13, Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and the fish likewise. Verse 14, this is now the third time that Jesus was manifested to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Okay, in verse 13, I want to go there. What is missing? What obvious detail is missing that was always included when food was served? He didn't bless the food before serving it. Why didn't he bless the fish, the bread, before giving them breakfast? Because cursed fish do not get blessed. Because Cursed governments, cursed mountains do not get blessed. The only other time he ate and did not bless the food first was on his resurrection day when the two men came back from Emmaus, went to the upper room, testified that Jesus is alive. He's been resurrected. Jesus appeared. He manifested and he said, hey, is there anything to eat here? Someone handed him a piece of broiled fish and he ate it. He ate it before blessing it. Because when he was crucified, Angeline brought up those bowls of Bashan that were surrounding him at the cross, mocking him, wagging their heads at him, saying, come down off that cross if indeed you are the son of God. Well, I think... That's when he started his meal and he started eating some of those cursed fish because he did not bless them. All right, so this is another very important and glaring detail about who that people group is that makes up the 153 fish. And verse 14, let's read that again. This is now the third time that Jesus was manifested to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. The third time because there's the pre-trib rapture, Bride, the first fruits harvest, cream of the crop, those who are ready at the time and do not assume that's going to be on a feast date because it's a Gentile bride. Okay, then there is the mid-trib raptured church. That is the main harvest. Since that group, the church at mid-trib will have the nation of Israel represented in the church now you can make an informed and studied assumption, a safe assumption that will happen on a feast date. Okay, then the third time is to the remnant. When the tares are bundled and gathered to be burned and the wheat is gathered and taken to the barn for safety. So those are the three times that Jesus manifests himself in a particular way. So let's go back to the very beginning of our study. What was that very first verse? It, it was phrased in a very interesting way. John 21, 1. After these things, Jesus manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he manifested himself in this way. So in this way, meaning one of the three snatchings, one of the three raptures to safety. The bride goes up and gets a glorified body. The church goes up, gets a glorified body. The remnant gets snatched, raptured sideways, remain in their mortal body, and taken to the barn. They are this remnant. Jesus is going to provide a meal for them. He's going to restore their health. 
extend their lifespan because they are going to repopulate the earth during Christ's millennial reign. They are going to plunder the enemy, everything the enemy has taken from them, their homes, their families, their farms, their vineyards. Think of the book of Job. Everything is going to be restored by us spending this time to learn about this people group called the remnant, we begin to see very important prophetic passages. And in this lesson, we've only covered some high points. I mean, this was a very long lesson, and I can present far more evidence of who this 153 fish are to verify it. But I want you to dig in and do a comparison study of those fishing scenes in all four Gospels, and you're going to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit pointing out the differences and how you can be assured these 153 fish are the bad guys that are scheduled for the fire that Jesus will kindle. So I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Sorry it was so long. I hope that you will encourage the team here with some affirmations. Leave them in the comment section. That really does lift our spirits because we work very hard at trying to bring you the most accurate Bible prophecy interpretation. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.